Hi, so let's take a look at how Ansible benefits from infrastructure code and standard software development practices, um, especially including things like linting. So coding style guides are pretty common in larger organizations. And we have a couple of examples here from Google and the deeper end of the spectrum. So the Python style guide and the Java style guide. And it, it's important uh, to talk about style because it, it's really a conversation about readability. And readability is very important. We get into actually being able to maintain any code, including infrastructure code. Uh, what we write will probably be read several times uh, by other people on the team. And so having uh, standard standards, having uh, certain practices, certain ways that we're expecting certain um, code blocks to look is uh, definitely important to, to really make things scale and to get our automation goals uh, headed in the right general direction. So Ansible isn't a, a language exactly like something like Python or Java or languages, but it does uh, have enough of the same um, overall uh, DNA to, to allow us to do quite a bit uh, around this. And so, um, in the first place, Ansible Lint, it comes as a module anywhere that you would install Ansible on a control node, um, you would have it uh, as well, uh, typically. And so we can we can do a couple of things here. So we're gonna clear the screen. Um, and we can go ahead and run, you know, first of all, just a general Ansible Lint, simple command. We're pointing it at a, a playbook that we've created here. And so let's just take a look at what the Ansible community's default worldview is. So they basically provide a, kind of a summary set of um, like best practices, syntactic sugar that you know generally a, a applies to and, and benefits the, the entire community that works with it. And so we see here the Ansible and came back and is uh, saying that all tasks should be named and uh, in general, you know, I would agree with that. Um, but when we don't necessarily end up agreeing with the entire default worldview or, you know, we need to override something, there are ways to do that. There's the X flag and we can pass other, you know, kind of config file options and, and things of that nature to exclude rules or to you know, reduce noise or anything else like that. Another thing that um, it allows us to do, though, is, it, you know, we can we can take basically um, the default rules and the custom rules and, and kind of combine them into a, a, a supercharged overall approach. And so we'll, we'll look here at a custom rule set. So a lot of this is just standard um, uh, class-based um, uh, constructs that we uh, we can use and that Ansible Lint's more or less expecting when we look at, at custom rule sets uh, and working with those. And so we can go ahead and generate a match rule here. And uh, we'll go ahead and, and run this so just in terms of looking at the, the, the command line again, what we're doing here is we're pointing at a custom uh, rules folder um, that once again, we'll be looking for the gather facts rule uh, Python file. And we're pointing at the, the playbook that we had looked at earlier. And we'll see what our custom rule uh, detects here about it. And so it does in fact show, um, Fact gathering uh, being enabled, and it's recommending that we turn that off. And so, just you know, briefly on on that aspect. So, you know, fact gathering can be helpful, but it tends to slow down playbook runs at scale. And so, we might, in this scenario, have a situation in which we are looking to, um, you know, set a global standard that says we're not going to use facts in general um, uh, to carry variables into our playbooks uh, because it slows things down. We're going to look for other ways to do that. And so, if a new teammate comes uh, uh, in and starts developing that way, uh, it can it can be flagged and it can either you know be something that uh, is is prevented or at least a discussion to, to try to understand why you know facts should be enabled to detect OS or anything else like that. Um, and and that gives you you know just a tremendous amount of control uh, and and consistency. And that, you know, really looking at a you know, comprehensive and extensible source code analyzer like Ansible Lint, uh, in just a matter of a few minutes here, you know, we're going from potentially a place where we have external documentation or everybody knows like it's just institutional knowledge that we would do something like disable fact gathering. And now we've got this in a version controllable 
custom rule set that we can apply and, and use you know, on a repeatable basis, on an extensible basis, even uh, sharing across teams and, and so on. And that really um, becomes a way to really start uh, not only capturing, but really truly expressing our team's infrastructure code standards as code itself.